Hey guys, in this video I wanted to show you the completed transmission that we've made so far. As you can see from uh, the right half of my screen, this is the CAD file of the transmission. Uh, you guys might have seen it uh, before, so let's just give you a quick overview of it. This is one of the Vex, Vex Omni wheels that's made out of plastic. You'll see in a second the ones we have right now are metal, but these are about uh, half a pound lighter, so we'll be using these instead. Now, just a quick overview. Uh, it's pretty simple. We just have a SEM. That uh, little uh, red glowing thing is a thrust bearing. We have a worm, we have a spacer, and then we have another bearing down here, and then we have an encoder. Um, the encoder isn't really too critical. The ones we have are uh, 360 uh, pulses per revolution. And the uh, transmission ratio we have is around a 10 to 1. Now, the worm itself is made out of uh, steel, and the uh, worm gear is made out of uh, bronze. We couldn't get any other materials, so that's just what we went with. And then having a just quick look, uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward, pretty simplistic. Uh, the bolts up here the sim, they're actually countersunk, so they uh, sit flush with the top of the plate, so the sim could be mounted on top. So just a quick view, you can see what's going on. Now let me show you the actual transmission. Now this is the actual transmission. I guess it's uh, mirrored left to, <laughs> left to right and uh, right to left on the screen. That's just my uh, camera inversion. But uh, as you can see, pretty much looks uh, exactly like that, except uh, on the wheels, as I said, these are the ones we've used uh, two years ago, and they uh, weigh about two and a half pounds. So they weigh quite a bit. The new ones only weigh about 1.35 pounds, so they're about half the weight of these. So as you can tell, you can see down there the red thing is the thrust bearing. We have the worm, the spacer, the bearing, and then the encoder. And everything pretty much fit together perfectly. This whole assembly weighs, I think, right now six and a half pounds. But like someone's replaced the wheels, we'll shit about a pound off of it. We actually did the math, and with the plastic Omnis, with four complete transmissions, with the four connecting C channels, it's going to weigh around 27 pounds. So our whole drive chassis, minus the electronics, just all the physical stuff is going to weigh around 27 pounds, which is uh, quite light. I'm not sure if you could get it much lighter than that with a 10 to 1 transmission ratio. But um, as you can see, the spacing actually worked out uh, perfectly. We had no issues with it. There's uh, absolutely no play on the worm gear. There is, however, play on the wheel, as you can see here real quick, if we can get a good, good position. And this is purely due to the fact that the coupler, key, and axle play is where it all comes from. So all of this is purely from the coupler, the key, and this half inch axle. So we'll see if it's worth uh, messing around with that because that's quite a bit. And that's one of the reasons we I put the encoder directly onto the sim shaft because it negates all play which means we won't get erroneous data out of it. So the encoder is mounted directly to a key, to the worm, to a key, to the sim shaft but there's absolutely zero play there so we'll get uh, really good speed data out of it without the jerkiness of this play so if the coupler was attached to the axle mind you it wouldn't be as much as the wheel but there would still be some play between whatever it is between the worm itself and the actual worm gear as you can see I'm putting quite a bit of force on there you might be able to hear it but that's not moving anywhere that has absolutely zero play in it if you look really closely <clears throat> on the cam, it won't focus too well, but it may look like it's wearing, but it's not really wearing. All it's doing is polishing the surface because the way the worm rubs on the gear, just in its nature, that face where it touches, it's going to become polished, and that's pretty much all that's happening to these gears. And we've actually uh, put quite a bit of uh, <laughs> abuse through them. I ran them through my uh, PID controlled speed program which I have a video of earlier with the old transmission and I did it slammed full one direction which spins the wheel at around 1000 rpm and I just slammed it 100% in the opposite direction and I did that about 20 times or so and uh, I mean it doesn't care the one thing that did happen is we <laughs> drew 80 to 100 amp uh, current spike out of the Jaguars and the Jaguars went into a uh, protect current mode so when I'm actually running the robot with this, I'm actually going to put a software limit on the current, so if it starts spiking to 80 amps, reduce the ramp. So that should negate the Jaguar shutting down. But like I said, that was pretty much from one extreme to the absolute other extreme, 
which I think is pretty much not really an issue considering on their actual robot movement. It won't happen like that. If when we do do directional changes, it's usually a pretty low speed. So that type of uh, force shouldn't be on the Jaguars going from one extreme to the other extreme. Also, those wheels are spinning considerably faster considering they're unloaded at least twice as fast. So when they're actually loaded down, they'll have less centripetal, uh, for centripetal force on them. So this is the new one. And for reference, I have uh, last year's. So this is last year's, and it actually worked quite well. As you can see, both on here we only have a 5 to 1 ratio, and these big steel gears weigh quite a bit, a couple pounds each. So, But due to, this, due to the fact that we have a 5 to 1 ratio, we had to use a pretty small wheel. Because in reality, the ratios between the surface speed of these wheels is actually exactly the same. This one has a 5 to 1 ratio with a 4 inch wheel. This one has a 10 to 1 ratio with a 10 inch wheel. So once you do the math, the surface speed of these wheels is actually identical. <clears throat> but otherwise, as you can see, this is pretty big and bulky and we have to make it that way just because to get the centers in the wheels. And you compare it to the new one, it's much, much lower profile. And actually on last year's, this encoder wasn't on there. Last year, all we did was we uh, changed the PWM value. We, I just put this encoder on here this year to play with the PID setup. So in, in that regard, considering we're going to start off with an encoder on this one, it's going to be much more accurate uh, data. But pretty much as you can see, this was last year's. It worked well, but then this is this year's, which, which, which should work uh, much better, and it weighs quite a bit less. This thing weighs about 2 pounds less than this once we put that plastic wheel on there. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or want to know any more information, let me know. Thanks for watching.